Now let's talk about theanine with some potential drug interactions. So we've got one of them is caffeine. And yeah, I showed you a number of these research studies had kind of a combination trials of using them both. But what we know about theanine is it kind of is a counterbalance. So it kind of balances the, the caffeine out, the stimulus of caffeine. And so it, it tempers jitteriness, so to speak, where some of you might be hypersensitive to caffeine where it gives you jitters or makes you have heart palpitations. Well, one of the things that theanine tends to do is, again, it allows you to get the improvement of the caffeine to your energy without this. So it has that inter interaction. It's not necessarily a bad interaction. It's actually a good one. Um, any hypertensive, uh, if you're taking blood pressure medication, there's, there's some studies that show that theanine actually kind of lowers or calms this because it calms the body, it lowers blood pressure. And so there's a theoretical, um, I say theoretical cause it hasn't been really studied in humans, but if you're taking blood pressure medicine or sedatives, just be aware that, um, taking theanine uh, it could lower potentially your, your blood pressure or calm you so much that it has a synergistic effect with these medications, you know, doing too good of a job. And so just be aware of that. And if you're in that category, you know, as always, talk with your doctor uh, about it. Now I want to talk about some of the other mechanisms, some of the other drug mechanisms or interactions that we see. So here's One of the things that happens to a lot of people is they overconsume caffeine. Um, we see this a lot, especially in the youth today, where they're going, you know, they're going to Starbucks and they're getting, you know, triple shots, and so they're they're jamming out on 500 milligrams of caffeine first thing in the day, and then they can't sleep at night. Um, and so, in this particular study, they were analyzing how theanine can offset that with caffeine. So you can see here, theanine reduces the excitotoxicity of caffeine. The study evaluated whether theanine improves the sleep quality worsened by caffeine in healthy young women. So if you're drinking a bunch of caffeine in the morning or taking energy drinks in the morning and then your sleep sucks, um, well, I would just suggest you quit drinking so much energy drinks. But what they're finding is that theanine can reduce caffeine's effect, uh, poor effect on, on sleep quality. So I guess if you wanted to counter antidote your, your, you know, your, your energy drinks with theanine, you could make that as an attempt. I think ultimately it'd be a better decision to just reduce the quantity of energy drinks and caffeine that you're taking in. Um, here's another interesting um, study. And this one was a, was a mouse study, so it's not human, but, but I think there's good application for this because in our world where we have people that are addicted to different, you know, different drugs, in this case, THC or marijuana, um, tetrahydrocannabinol, the, the, you know, the Delta-9 is the active ingredient, THC, in, in marijuana. And we're seeing with the legalization of so much marijuana, we're seeing the emergency rooms fill up with neuropsychiatric problems. Um, talk to any ER doctor and they'll tell you, we are, we are inundated with people now who are overdosing on marijuana and the psychiatric issues that are showing up and the damage that's showing up as a consequence is not good. And so what these, what these researchers were trying to do is study whether or not theanine could have some type of beneficial effect for these individuals. Um, and so their and preliminary study is in mice. And so what they found in the mice is that pretreatment with L-theanine blocked THC-induced downregulation of glycogen synthase kinase 3. Um, which, which is a chemical byproduct of toxicity of, of marijuana use. So finally, the L-theanine powerfully blocked the development of both affective and cognitive abnormalities commonly associated with adolescent THC exposure. And so their, their, their findings here, although it was, in a, again, not in a human trial, but in a, in a mouse trial, um, you can notice here this big blue box that says significant statement. What they're basically saying here is that we have a... a a record pace at which we're seeing psychiatric problems caused by dope. Um, you know, this is significant because maybe we can, we can look at having L-theanine as a potential antidote of sorts in these individuals. And of course, human tri trials need to be done. Um, but I would say if you're struggling, I mean, there's no danger in taking L-theanine. There's, that's the whole thing. Like a natural substance that has the potential to reduce the potential toxicity of the drug. And if you find yourself addicted to marijuana, or maybe you're doing marijuana because you're, you know, you've got it medicinally for pain or whatever, um, 
you know, it doesn't come without consequence, and L-theanine may have some potential implication there. Here's another study that I wanted to share on the administration of theanine and cysteine in cancer patients. So this is actually a human trial, um, and what they found is that um, in patients receiving chemotherapy, they gave um, cysteine and theanine both, these, both of these amino acids. For, for cysteine, they gave seven, 700 milligrams, and for theanine, they gave 280 milligrams, which alleviated the adverse effects caused by the anti-cancer drug, um, reduced the frequency of therapy suspension or discontinuation caused by adverse events. So a lot of times when people are going through chemotherapy, they have to stop because the side effects are so aggressively terrible that they can't go on. And so what these researchers are saying is that the administration of cysteine and theanine allowed those people to continue their course of therapy, but also reduce the side effects uh, from the therapy that they were going through. So if you know somebody going through chemo, and L-theanine is not going to interfere with that, and, you know, safe to take. Those are not high doses. And cysteine as well. Cysteine safe, 700 milligram dose of cysteine. Here's another one. You know anybody addicted to nicotine? I know there's a bunch of people online saying take nicotine for everything now and that nicotine is a wonderful, great thing, and I don't agree with those statements, but a lot of people are highly addicted to nicotine and it's, you know, the active ingredient in, in cigarettes. Um, this study, this was a mouse-based study on um, how L-theanine attenuates nicotine reward and withdrawal symptoms in mice. So what they found was that by giving L-theanine it reduced the, um, the side effects of withdrawal from nicotine in this animal model. So hyperalgesia, algesia, and somatic uh, signs during nicotine withdrawal. So our results support the potential of l as a promising candidate for treating nicotine dependence. So are you struggling to get off? Are you trying to quit smoking? Are you using nicotine patches because you're addicted to nicotine? You might want to just look into L-theanine as a potential aid in that situation. Oh, let's see here. We got, let's look at this here. So this is another study uh, more of the, uh, about medication, specifically for Parkinson's treatment. So what, what this research study was investigating was mainly the fact that patients with Parkinson's disease who are on long-term L-DOPA, you have to understand L-DOPA, the primary drug to treat the tremors in Parkinson's disease, actually creates the very problem it's treating as you're on the drug for long periods of time. So it's one of the problems with long-term L-DOPA use. And you see here, we, can, we hypothesize, this is their study, we hypothesize the idea that L-theanine being a potent natural agent against L-DOPA induced dyskinesia, since, that means movement disorder or movement abnormality, since long-term reliance on dopamine replacement therapy is linked with elevation in glutamate receptor activity. Remember what I was telling you earlier is that one of the mechanisms of, by which L-theanine exerts its impact, we believe, is by blocking glutamate. And glutamate is an excitatory neurochemical, and so here's maybe a better visual for you to, to understand this, is that in Parkinson's disease itself, you know, you get um, oxidative stress of nerves, nerve excitotoxicity and nerve inflammation, and all these things can contribute to, to Parkinson's disease, and then the treatment for Parkinson's disease is L-DOPA, and if you're on that for long periods of time, you get hyperactivated glutamate receptors, which induce movement disorder. So it actually creates a, a bigger part of the problem, right? So what, what they're finding in animal research specifically is that L-theanine blocks this, inhibits this, it, because it interacts with this glutamate receptor. So this glutamate receptor is responsible for this dyskinesia and uh, L-theanine helps to block that, but L-theanine has other potential neurological benefits. It, it reduces neurological stress, it reduces neuronal excitotoxicity, and it reduces inflammation in the nerves. So what they're saying is that there's a potential therapeutic role of using L-theanine possibly in patients long-term who are being treated for Parkinson's 
But there's also a potential possibility that just using L-theanine alone might have neuroprotective effects. No human trials that have confirmed you know, so I'm, I'm, what I'm not saying here is, is if you've got Parkinson's, that taking 400 milligrams a day of l is going to cure your Parkinson's. It's not what I'm saying. But if you have it and you're trying to do something natural, possibly to attenuate the long-term dopamine side effects, maybe worth a shot. Uh, here's, here's kind of another visual for you and the way that theanine impacts um, nerves. So you've got different things that can impact or damage nerves. You've got stress and aging and post-operative complications and side effects of medications, as we just talked about, a lot of different medications. And then um, when you impair that nerve, you know, depending on the nerve and where it's located, you can get sleep dysfunction, mood problems, neuropathic pain, and even organ damage. And so what what they're finding in animal and, and cell research is that theanine helps to attenuate these things um, as, as it relates to neurological problems. So I'd love to see more research in humans coming out on this, but as we've talked about so many times before, um, it's very hard to, to gather the money to do human research trials. Most of the money on research in, in human health goes to drugs, unfortunately. Um, this is maybe a good time as we're, as we're going through a, a movement to make America healthier again. Um, would be maybe a time to contact the people in political power and let them know you'd like to see more of our tax dollars, hard-earned tax dollars, go to something more meaningful than just only medication. Let's start studying these natural components for their impacts and effects on health. Okay, is it safe to supplement with theanine? Simple answer, yes, it's very safe. So L-theanine is, is on the generally recognized as safe list in the U.S. as a food ingredient, and it's uh, you know, proved for up to 250 milligrams per serving uh, as a safe amount. And then there's also multiple randomized controlled trials that report good tolerability at two to 400, even up to 900 milligrams a day. There's studies uh, that show that that, it, that high of a dose for, for relatively long periods of time, months, is, is safe with very little to no adverse side effects. Um, so adverse effects, usually uncommon and mild. Um, what can they be? Headaches or GI upset in some studies. Uh, and then monitoring for low blood pressure or dizziness. Again, this is especially true if you're on blood pressure medication. Um, some work shows reduced heart rate and sympathetic responses to stress. In other words, I, what I like L-theanine for in, in practice as far as supplementation is concerned is you take somebody who's sympathetic dominant so sympathetic dominance this is fight or flight if you find yourself anxious all the time you're not digesting your food very well you're not sleeping well your gut uh, your gut's bloated because you're not digesting very well um, you're prone to any form of stress just wiping you out. Um, in other words, you, the little stressors have become the big stressors, right? You're sympathetic dominant. And this is where I really like to support somebody with theanine is why? Because what does theanine do? It attenuates the stress response. One of the impacts here is it can reduce cortisol. We see that in some trials. But what I have found, at least in my own practice, is that the use of L-theanine for many of these people that are living right here you know, is similar to what they found in other human trials. What do we find? If, well, these people in fight or flight, now we use theanine, and what happens is they sleep better. So then what happens? It's like a chain reaction, right? When you get better sleep, you wake up with more energy, Your mood enhances because you have more energy and you're actually able to sleep. So you have better outcome, a better, you know, psychological outcome on your day. Um, you know, when you're stuck here for a long period of time, just getting this to needle to move right here, the sleep is super critical. And we always, you know, I always talk about 
fundamentally, what are, what are the six things that you have to do, you cannot negotiate with to have good health? You know, one, one is your, your diet. It has to be real food, it has to be a clean diet, it has to be food you're not allergic to, it needs to be free of chemicals, additives, and all the pesticides and other chemicals. Number two is what we just talked about, your sleep. If your sleep is disrupted, you know, that's gonna be bad. Number three, we, we've gotta have movement, exercise. Number four, we gotta have sunshine. And five, we got to have clean air. And six, water, clean water. So if you don't have these things going on in your life, I mean, really prioritize. This is your primary to get healthy. And so when we can get people to sleep better um, who are in a chronic state of fight or flight or have been, because, and not because necessarily they're really stressed, but because they've been sick so long, they're so frustrated and so amped up and so um, angry with people around them. They're angry with their doctors because all the treatments and all the things haven't worked. And so they're stressed to the max because their body's failing them and they don't know why and they're not sleeping as a result. So if we can move the needle here with L-theanine, um, sometimes it's a game changer. It begins to help get that person in a better state of mind and move in the right direction. What's the dosing here for um, L-theanine? In terms of sleep, what I like to use is, I like to always just start with 200 milligrams, but typically what I find is we gotta go up to 400 milligrams, and ideally this is gonna be approximately um, 30 to 40 minutes prior going to sleep. So this is one of, the, one of the key things that I have found to be extremely helpful for this right here. And, it's, and it works even better if you, in my experience, if you combine it with things like L-tryptophan, which is an amino acid that helps make serotonin and melatonin. And also if you do, um, you can do other things. A lot of people find magnesium, uh, especially magnesium three and eight to be super helpful in that regard. But getting that, that sleep activated, again, it sometimes is the thing that moves the needle in the right direction. So this is one of my favorite reasons to use it. My other favorite re reason to use it is let's say um, you're trying to focus. You need to sit down. You've got a lot of work to do. And this is, you know, what I was saying earlier about the research studies on entrepreneurs and students. And, you know, for me, um, when I sit down to study or when I sit down and I really need to be hyper focused and I need to have all my distractions out, I will definitely mix caffeine. I'll take about uh, well, usually I, in the form of, of a cup of coffee or some other caffeinated beverage, but about 120 milligrams plus theanine. And now my mind's going to be less distracted, more focused, and I, can, and I can really get a lot more work done. I can get a lot more research and study done. So this is just another way that I've seen the uh, L-theanine work really, really well, and it, and it pairs really nicely with caffeine. They're actually... Um, so if you're caffeine intolerant, you might just skip that part. I know many of you are, but if you're, uh, if you are, then, then stay here. And I'd start with this at just 200 milligrams every several hours, depending on how long you're going to be, you know, at it. But, um, those are some of my favorite ways to use theanine personally, but also with people that come see me in the clinic. So, Hey, if you've got a story with L-theanine, if you've used it and you found it to be beneficial in some way, chime in the comment section below and let us know how it's helped you. And if we were talking about sleep and if you haven't checked out some of my other crash courses or master classes, you know, if you're struggling here with this sleep piece, make sure you check out my class on sleep. We'll put a link up here for you to, to watch that master course so that you can... Um, you know, you can navigate some of the potentials of improving your sleep quality as well. Thanks so much for tuning in to Dr. Osborne's Zone. I'd appreciate a like. I'd appreciate a subscribe below. If you found this information helpful, remember our mission and goal is to save 100 million lives with solid information, research-backed information that puts the power in your hands so that you can take control of your health and be the best you. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you Thursday for a live Q&A at 12.30 Central Standard Time. Take care.